Hi, this is Kurt Barone, and welcome to another edition of File Law Roundup. Kobe Bryant. Um, and yeah, I know we think this is like, a, you know, a famous uh, issue, but this is an issue for the fire service, period. Um, this is a big issue. And uh, I love the way you describe it on the blog. People should take some time and read it. It's important, but we're going to summarize it. So as you know, uh, Kobe Bryant and a family friend uh, and family died in a helicopter crash. The county first responders arrived and for some insane reason started photographing dead bodies. Um, I will never understand why, but not for me to understand. In any event, so as you can imagine, there was a lawsuit. We know the, and we're going to look at the lawsuit very much in depth now because what they alleged and the jury ultimately found is critical, critical for fire departments. And let me just say this, you cannot any longer, if you were before, you cannot turn a blind eye to whether you have or do not have a policy on photography and talking about photography, all right? This almost, this, what we're about to go through, this case mandates, right? Basically mandates that you properly train your employees on a proper policy regarding this and similar types of action. So, okay, so the action we're talking about is photographing dead bodies. Now, there are some states, as we know, New York State is waiting the governor's signature on a law that will, uh, it hasn't been signed yet. It hasn't been signed yet? It has I can't not believe been signed that. yet. Everyone made a lot of hoopla about like it. Most but, places, if the law isn't signed, it goes into law automatically. Yeah, pocket veto, 90 you days. Know? It's, it's yeah. uh, I don't even know that it's been sent to the governor yet. So that's when the yeah. time would start. Uh -huh. In any event, but some states have, or are going to have laws on uh, taking pictures and then posting them for no valid purpose, et cetera. Um, this didn't even go that far. This was, they took pictures, right? Let's go through the facts. So the helicopter crashes, first responders get there. They take pictures. They're showing pictures at the bar and showing pictures to people. Also, um, there was an allegation, I guess proven, that the uh, employer, the county says, hey, if you just erase them, it'll be fine. Um, <laughs> and that was by the sheriff. That was the county <laughs> sheriff who told them that. And let, let's, be, uh, let's be fair to everybody here because I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. This was not just firefighters. There were right. firefighters. Please. There were officials of the department such as a captain who was serving as a PIO that took some of the pictures as well. And there was some sort of approved pictures as well. But then there was a question about the use of those pictures. So, but we had sheriffs, deputy sheriffs, and we had firefighters from LA County uh, that uh, took, and when I teach this, okay, and I think it's a, a really important point here, we separate two, two distinct things, the taking and the sharing. Okay, two distinct things. There may be situations where taking is fine. That taking isn't the problem, okay? Right. It's the sharing that gets us into trouble. Okay, so it's important, I think, to, to keep a laser shop focus on those two. And our policies need to reflect, we need to control some of the taking, okay? We need right. to control all of the sharing. <laughs> right. right, and a, look, a valid purpose protects the, sh the taking of it, right? So right. here- Maybe the FAA hadn't arrived and before you extricate people or you want to, you know, maybe it helps preserve what happened to the scene, car accident cases, yeah. things like, right? So there's valid purposes certainly to the taking, but mm -hmm. here it was about the sharing. So here what happens is they sue um, under, uh, among other things, section 1983 of the constitution, which basically provides that somebody who is acting under color state law, like a sheriff or a, or a county or municipal firefighter, deprived another person, and here the Bryants and the family friend, of any immunities or rights or privileges that were granted under the state constitution. Very general. So here we have a more specific allegation that the um, county, firefighters, police, et cetera, um, violated 1983 because they had policies that and, and see the double negative here, but they had policies that failed to prevent the violations of law um, and that they failed to train or properly train their employees on the proper procedures. But let's make it simple. The simple part is they had no policies that prevented this behavior and they failed to train uh, their employees to prevent the behavior. And the behavior we're talking about is pretty much sharing 
of the very, very, you know, confidential and graphic pictures. So the court goes through, which we should hear because it's extremely important for everyone to understand, in order to win on a 1983 claim, right, then you've got to show that, you know, yeah, you failed to train on policies, but you also either had failed to implement policies or effective policies, right? Having a policy that does nothing doesn't help you. Having a policy that's ineffective does nothing. Or having effective policies that you then don't train and enforce. Um, and I'm adding the enforce. This is more about training here. But you got to, right, you got to have the whole package. Got to have an adequate policy. You got to train on it and you got to enforce it. So here they said, listen, your policies that you had weren't, obviously weren't effective, right? And that's pretty easy to prove because nobody adhered to them. And they obviously weren't effective to prevent this violation of your constitutional rights. And they also had to prove as part of this claim, and this is the harder part, truthfully, um, that the municipalities, the defendants were deliberately indifferent. They intentionally didn't care, right? And because they intentionally didn't care or they were deliberately indifferent, that there was a substantial risk that the policies wouldn't be enforced or that they were inadequate to prevent these violations of law. And finally, that the municipality should have known that because it was indifferent and had poor policies and didn't train on them, that there would have been a um, violation. So let me switch this for a second, switch the fact. So ultimately 16 million to the Bryants, it may have been reduced by a million. I think it was, it was reduced by a uh, million, so. Yeah, I just saw that. And then 16 million or maybe 15 to the families. There had previously been a settlement, I think of 2.5 or something. But, but to, there was a total of four suits by the families. For, like there was, I think 16 people on the helicopter, whatever it was, but there was a total of four suits. Um, two of them were settled for 1.25 million each. So that was a total of 2.5 million. And the last two were decided in this jury trial that ended last Thursday. Yeah. And yeah. look, you know, imagine being the jury, because imagine mm -hmm. yourself in front of a jury when they hold up the picture and say, should this have been distributed? End of case. I don't care what you think that it, and I'm sure there were objections. I didn't watch, but I'm sure there were objections saying, you know, you're you're just swaying the jury. You shouldn't introduce the pictures, too graphic, tough. You put them out there for everybody to see. You're not going to be able to say the jury couldn't see them, which I think is one of the parts of this. In any event, the deliberate indifference is so important to talk about because look. If, if the county, let's say they had a policy that says you can't take any inappropriate pictures unless they're needed for a valid purpose, and if you take them, they have to be stored carefully, can't be distributed. Let's assume the county trained everybody on that. Let's assume there was a uh, termination clause in there. So they said, if you violate this, we're going to terminate you, no questions asked. And let's assume they conducted adequate training. Mm -hmm. If those were the facts, this may very well have gone a different way. It's yeah, not. It may, it may not have happened in the first place. Well, right. Okay, right that's that's number point. one, right? And right. then, but if it did happen, the city's in a, or the county's in a better position to raise the defense. Absolutely. Right. right. So, and, and listen to the viewers, Kurt and I are not saying, hey, just put a good policy in place and ignore it, because that's the <laughs> deliberate indifference. That may be what happened here as well. I don't know. I haven't seen their policy, but uh, that may very well be. Right, you know? right. But, but everyone should be taking notice of this case. This is definitely the case to highlight for this week uh, for our short, but uh, everybody should be taking notice. Um, and sh you should be going back and saying, would we have acted the same way? Do our employees know not to act the same way? And please do not anyone say, well, common sense dictates. <laughs> this is, right? Because I've heard that. Well, who I would know. do that? I know. Oh, our, our, our guys, our, our folks are, are all mature. They would never do something like this. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Leading us to all the next cases. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. um, okay. So, so now, I, I, I do want to point out the yeah. you know, the, the consequence to this was also the enactment of a criminal law, making it now in California a criminal offense to do what these folks did. And in so, New York soon too. Right. And now New York has one pending. I thought it had already been uh, enacted, but it still is hung up in the bureaucracy, our desk. wonderful, wonderful bureaucracy. Uh, but New Jersey and Connecticut, 
are two states that have this have a law that prohibits this kind of uh, picture taking and criminalizes it. And the reason I want to emphasize that is if fire service leaders don't address this problem and get it to stop or manage it, then all 50 states are going to end up enacting criminal laws that make it a crime to do what they did here. We don't need that. I don't think that helps the, the situation. If we do our jobs as leaders, we can prevent this from becoming sort of a, a national trend, okay? Right. If we want to look the other way at it, you know, if we want to be the fire chief that, oh, well, you know, I don't want to pick on my people. I don't want to have these kind of rules, right? If you want right. to be that kind of a chief, then guess what? You know, the, the end result is going to be your state legislature enacting a law that makes it a crime because that's how state legislatures fix problems. Right, right. Just like OSHA, if you don't want to fix things, we will tell you how to do it. <laughs> um, I, but I, I really think that people have to understand that training is such an important corollary to policies. You know, having a policy is like 10 percent. But yeah. training people on it constantly is 90%. And I always think there should be a training day, you know, and maybe it takes eight hours, whatever it is, a training day, summarize the most important point from each policy, um, because people aren't going to remember all of them, but you yeah. highlight them every year. And right. And here, here would be simple. I could summarize this in a sentence. Don't take pictures, you know, when you don't need to and don't show anyone. <laughs> I mean, how hard is it? Right, right. Um, Until it, you know, the, we we could spend an hour on this one, and I don't want to, okay. I don't want to belabor it. But um, I I'm a big fan of picture taking, but we've got to manage it. And there's good news about picture taking because when when you're a firefighter and you go to a fire, you go to a helicopter crash, and you take pictures, those pictures may be public records. Okay, and now once they're public records. You know, you can put in a request to get a public record and it can be used. So the, the good news is if you take if your department allows you to take pictures and the pictures are within the public records law, right. then you can use them. And that's that's a good thing. That's a positive thing. Now, the, the downside to that is the department needs to manage that. And if there is something objectionable in the in the picture, then the fire department, just like any other public record, they have to redact that from the picture, and then the firefighter can use what's not redacted. So the good news is you can take pictures and use them as long as you follow a good policy that respects people's rights and your public records requirements. So, and, but, and you know, you do it on a personal cell phone and a whole different slew oh of God. issues, right? And we won't get off. We won't go there. But Now, now we'll start talking about Tom Brady and his cell yeah. phone. And, uh, <laughs> and All right, we know, won't go there. And, yeah, so... <laughs>